At Wild Green Primary School in Sutton Coalfield, the Year 6 teachers are going to try an exciting new way of engaging the children with scientific investigation. The teachers are keen to make connections between national curriculum knowledge and understanding and what science looks and feels like in the real world. They've chosen an ambitious investigation, exploiting the excitement of a true life crime scene. It will require the children to behave like forensic scientists and provide a springboard for cross-curricular learning. Joining the teaching team to plan the investigation is Jane Turner from the Science Learning Centre. I'm really glad you're going to do this forensics project. I think it'll be a lot of fun, be a lot of hard work as well, a lot of planning. So first thing you need to think about, why are you going to do it? We're trying to raise the profile of investigative science in the school at the moment and so we're doing Science Week and we thought this would be a wonderful project to put into that because it, it is a lot of investigative skills and it's something the children we know would really enjoy. I like this type of project because I think it's a really good cross-curricular project. It'll get them to think about story and motive and reason. You should be able to get lots of other work out of it as well as direct science inquiry. I think because it's coming after the SATs for Year 6. Right, so that's it's, when it'll be. It's going to be um, really nice to be able to link subjects together and work in a different way with the children working in groups and pairs and being able to do a lot of chatting and much less recording perhaps of things Thank than you. they've had to do in recent weeks. So Year 6s, so they'll have a great time after SATs. You've got to do all the work planning for them, so anybody else that you can draw on, either to help you with the planning or to be involved in the project as suspects, witnesses? We've been in, uh, talking to the police oh, and they're willing to become part of it great. as well. So we're involved with outside agencies. Um, the team in school works very hard together and our caretaker, site manager as I think he should be called, uh, and the office staff and the dinner ladies, I'm sure with a bit of arm twisting we'll all be happy oh, to get brilliant. involved. Yeah. I think we'd like to use a lot of um, ICT, we have access to a computer room and laptops and right. um, digital microscope. Digital cameras? Have you got? Uh, yeah, and um, digi-blue cameras as well. <laughs> The first thing you need to decide is what's the crime and have you had any time to think about that? Uh, well this has been a bit of an interesting one actually, we have had time to think about it. We came up with this idea to start with of getting the year sixes very excited about it around as competition, perhaps the trophy that they can win and that may go missing. Theft is probably your best crime and we don't want to start getting into really gory stuff with this age children, but it has to be of something that matters to the children. So having identified an item with something like a rounders match that they're bothered about is a really good idea. Now you've got to think about where it happened, how it happened, and to make it a crime worth solving, we've got to have a number of suspects. So there's a lot to think about, and probably the next thing which will help us is to say, well, where did this crime happen and when? We've certainly got an interesting site here. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen quite as many sheds in a school as there are. No, we're here. not short of sheds. No, <laughs> we're certainly not. So really, we've got to decide which would be the best place and the most credible place that children might use as a storage for them to keep the rounders equipment. I do think it's important that we find somewhere where we can set up the crime scene and it's not going to be disturbed so the children can return to it perhaps over two or three days looking for other evidence. Because we want to be quite authentic in our practice so what the police would do would tape off a crime scene and nobody has access to it other than the detective so we need an area that we can actually exclude most of the school from without disrupting what goes on every day. Oh, another shed. How many sheds does this school have? <laughs> right, this is by the Year 6 classroom, isn't it? That's right, the Year 6 classroom is right there. And we've got 
Street. This is the lollipop crossing, isn't it? That's all right. Mm. So, a $6 million question, what's in there? What is this shed? Well, the shed belongs to Mr Bob, who's the caretaker. All right. But I have managed to get the key. Certainly lots of people there. Oh, right. Oh, oh right. It's very full, isn't it? Well, it's quite full. Mm. Oh, look, broken window. Well, the children wouldn't need to know that that window was broken before the crime, so mm. it could look as though the window was broken during the crime. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of space in here, but do you need a lot of space? How much stuff are they going to store in here? It's just going to be the box with the trophy, isn't it, really? OK, so the trophy will be in there and removed. So we've yes. now got to think about how it could have happened. Um, in that planning, you need to think what evidence will be left behind that the children cannot analyse. Well, we need to get some blood, don't we? Yeah. Blood would be good, cos we could do some good <laughs> stuff with that. Yeah. We wanted to get some fibres as well. So there'd be fibres, blood, perhaps, somewhere. Yeah. There might be some fingerprints on them. Definitely. Yeah. We've got a nice bit of garden over there for footprints. Yeah, that'd be good. I mean, it's very clean and tidy, this school, so if a bit of litter had been dropped, or, you know, a note or something yes, that came up, a bus ticket right. or something yes. like that, that would be noticeable, wouldn't it? Something the children could find. So I think we have might have found our site. Right, who's done this crime, then? Who's going to be your baddie? Well, we haven't actually decided who exactly is going to have done it yet, but we have got some suspects lined up. Give me your suspects, then. Well, the first one is Mr Bob, the caretaker. Right. He's very partial to playing golf. Right. And I think on the day of the tournament, he's got a very important golf match. Right. Anybody else as a suspect? Head teacher. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why might he have done it? I think he'd quite like to play. I think he'd quite like a bit of competition. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment, his uh, ankle's in a plaster cast, oh, right. so he can't play. All oh, right, so he'd be a bit grumpy because I think he could so, play. definitely, yeah. All right, so that's another good a suspect with a motive, trying to scupper the game. I think we really want to use some of the characters that we've got in school. One of the dinner ladies, right. Beryl. She's a very little lady with a huge personality. Why might she have stolen the cup? Well, we're going to get her to come and do some refreshments, but she I didn't want to, want to for some reason. It could yeah. be her granddaughter's birthday or something. She's a bit grumpy about it. She's a it. bit grumpy and has mm -hmm. been moaning, perhaps, to one or two of them that she's got to come back after oh, right. school okay. to do these refreshments okay. for them. We've got a few suspects. We need two more suspects, really, to make it interesting. I would suggest you think of the the culprit and think of four or five bits of evidence. So we've got blood, we've got fingerprints, we've got a letter and we've got the footprints. And I think we were also going to think about a, um, some fibres. Yeah. Oh, yeah, from a, a piece, piece of, of clothing. torn yeah. clothing. Yeah. And I think we can lead them to believe that certain people were at the crime yeah, scene. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just a plaster on a hand yeah. or... Yeah, so they go yeah. and interview the lady in the office and she's got a plaster on her wrist. Well, how did you do that? Oh, well, yes, yeah. I cut it at home, but it can... Yeah. Yes. Because leave. actually we want all of these people to have visited that crime scene, so there's a re reason why all of their evidence should be there. Because what we're mm. trying to get here is the children making a combination of evidence and motive. Mm -hmm. And so the two things together have to be, this is our case. It's half past six now, we've been talking about this for a couple of hours and we've really only just got it together. And now, in a way, you've got the hard stuff to do, which is the nitty-gritty, what happened when, what do I need? You know, I think the planning has got to be really, really thorough mm -hmm. because we've got to be speaking with one voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't have a sort of shared understanding of quite who's done which part of it mm -hmm. or who's left which part of evidence, then the whole thing is just going to fall down, isn't yeah. it? But it is science week in school, so I think we've got to be really clear about the science that we're going to be doing. Right. I mean, yeah, we've got citizenship here, drama, literacy, PSHE. What we're about doing the quite science? A lot. OK, yeah. right. Well, as a science person, I would say there's an awful lot of science here. We've got the real subject knowledge about materials, separating yeah. materials, mixing materials, what things are made of. All of that comes into forensics. That's really what forensics is in essence. Then we've got all of that, what makes people 
different. So if we're going to do DNA fingerprinting, yeah. if we're going to do ordinary fingerprinting, living things, how they're different, how they're the same. The whole science one here is massive because we're basing it on observation, inquiry, asking questions, drawing together evidence, data, coming up with conclusions based on hypothesis. You know, there's, the science is fantastic yeah. here, really fantastic. With the basic planning for the CSI science lessons underway, here's what our Year 6 teachers have decided upon so far. They've picked a likely crime and chosen the crime scene. A list of crime scene evidence is being considered. They've begun to choose some suspects from the school with some imaginative motives. A wide range of activities to enable the scientific investigations have been identified to focus the inquiry. These activities will encourage the children to be curious, to use careful observation, to collect data, make comparisons, to predict, hypothesize and evaluate. The challenge will be to make it all as real as possible for the children and to encourage them to behave just like real scientists. The crime scene has created quite a stir in the playground, but will it engage Year 6 in the science? I think uh, someone's broke him. Yeah. I just see blood on the floor and someone might have broke him. So the thing's gone a bit pear-shaped, which I didn't, I didn't realise and expect. Head teacher Peter Barnett provides an award-winning po-face performance to intrigue Year 6. I've just been talking to the police to work out what's been going on, but we've had some sort of burglary, some sort of breaking apparently into the shed outside. Something we think has been taken, we don't know what, and I don't know any details. He introduces Robin Slater, a scenes of crime officer and forensic scientist. We feel at the moment that it's uh, an inside job. Um, we do have some suspects at the moment. I don't know these people at all. Uh, a Mr John Evans, a Mr Bob Bird, is that? Mr Bob Bird, Mrs Beryl Cotton, and Mrs. Kim Murphy, uh, and uh, Mr. Peter Barnett. Do we know these people? Yeah. yeah. The teachers? Yeah. Are the children convinced by the list of suspects? Will this crime engage them with science? The investigation is about to begin. <laughs> <laughs> 